My name is Camille Castillo and I'm an engineer at West Basin Municipal Water District. West Basin Municipal Water District is a wholesale drinking water agency that provides water to over 1 million people in the LA County. Potable water is essentially drinking water that we consume every day and so it has to be treated in a way where we can eventually drink it. Recycled water is stuff that we actually treat here at Edward C. Little, and that water is eventually used for landscaping or irrigation because it cannot be consumed. However, both are great for the environment. And so we produce a lot of recycled water that gets distributed throughout our service area. And so a lot of our customers are public parks, schools, and so we distribute that recycled water so that they can be used for landscape irrigation. However, we also distribute to refineries who utilize that water for their cooling towers and their nitrification processes. As an engineer at West Basin, I mostly work on capital improvement projects. So that could be in the design, the, the planning, or the construction phase of that project. And if it's in the design phase, I'm working on reviewing plans with the consultants. And most of these projects are pipeline projects that build off our existing distribution system, or they're rehabbing and rehabilitating our existing treatment facilities that are located throughout our service area. And if it's in the construction phase, then I get to go in the field. And so when I'm in the field, I'm observing the work that's being done by the contractor, and I'm making sure it's being built according to the design plans. A day in the field is typically starts really early. Construction workers get out there pretty early. However, depending on what kind of project you have, it can be very complex and have multiple things going on. So you could be traveling to different sites or it could be something super simple, which is like a connection to our pipeline. And it's like 200 feet of new pipe that they're putting in. And so that can entail showing up at the site with your PPE, and that's usually a hard helmet, safety vest, boots, glasses, just to make sure you're safe in the field. Luckily, there's not too many dangerous things out there other than big construction equipment and giant holes in the ground. So you want to make sure that you're safe around those things, but you're also inspecting. In the construction phase, there are a lot of things that are exciting to do just because putting together a construction project is pretty chaotic, but we do our best to make sure it goes as smoothly as possible. So it's a constant problem solving, it's constant communication, and so that in itself is something that will make the day go by very fast. To be an engineer at West Basin, it's highly recommended to have a four-year degree. I have an environmental engineering degree, but it can be in any engineering degree, mechanical, civil, environmental. If you have an emphasis in water resources, it's a plus. Typical skills that are needed for this position is definitely a basic engineering civil principles. You want to know how these treatment facilities and processes work and operate, because that's very useful in design. Another skill that's helpful to know is GIS or AutoCAD. So if you know those programs, it's very useful when you're looking through the plans that are on the computer. And I'd say soft skills are just as important as technical skills because you're communicating so much. So it's not just writing, but it's also being able to talk to people and collaborate so that you can get a project done successfully. I definitely took all the fundamental engineering courses which pertain math, physics and chemistry since I was an environmental engineer. But at my school specifically, we fell under a renewable energy kind of program, but also within the mechanical department. So I got to double in some AutoCAD work as well. My favorite courses were definitely thermodynamics and fluid dynamics, but I really enjoyed environmental study classes, which was part of the elective choices that I could choose from. Growing up, I never really thought of engineering as a career. It wasn't until I graduated from high school and realized I was good at math and science that I decided to take this as a major. And so going in, I was just mostly focused on passing my courses, but it was through the internships that I took and the volunteer organizations I was a part of in college that kind of opened my eyes to the water industry. And that was because I got to go on these projects in Central America where we were in rural communities who didn't have great infrastructure. And so it was our job to kind of help them get to a place where they can be reliant on themselves. And I think there's when I kind of discovered this passion for water. And so coming back literally to America, I wanted to figure out where I could utilize my skills to help others get access to clean water and at a more local level. And so it was 
in my internships that I got right after college that kind of exposed me to the different areas that I can be involved with. In college, there's actually a lot of groups that you can be, in associations you can be a part of. One I remember that I was in for one semester was a civil engineering group that did really cool competitions about structures. And I think that's kind of helpful because we participated in a water treatment competition. And so that was something to kind of start getting more experience and acknowledging what is involved in the water treatment processes. I also think just trying to find an internship when you're in college is pretty critical to being able to get your foot in the door early on. So if you can find it through cities, if you can find it through nonprofits, there's a lot of different agencies you can go through that don't necessarily have to be the best in the business for you to kind of start getting experience. Because I think when you're so young and you don't have experience, it's really hard to get that entry level job. So creating that experience opportunity for you, for instance, you can volunteer. I shadowed treatment facility uh, operators. And so that just kind of gets you more into what you wanna do in the industry. My senior project when I was an environmental engineer studying at UC San Diego was actually to go out and measure sea level rise at a local lagoon in San Diego. And so our senior advisor at the time worked at an environmental consulting firm and she provided us the right gear and the equipment, which was an RTK surveying. Um, and we were able to go out there with my team and take a survey of the lay of the land, literally. And then cut forward to a few years later, I actually got a job at that consulting firm. Some advice I would give to people looking to get into this career is basically just be open-minded and willing to try new things. I think especially when you're just starting out, you're just trying to get your foot in the door, but once you get your foot in the door, kind of look around and see what other people are doing within that industry to, to get a feel of, do you see yourself doing that in 20 years? Or is that something that you can get good at? Because you don't have to be really good at the beginning. You kind of learn as you go along. So I think being able to be resourceful and, and utilize the people around you, but also do your own research and try to implement that and, and create experience for yourself even if it doesn't seem like there's an opportunity out there for you to do it. <laughs>